Let's investigate the effect of medium on the extent of refraction for when light travels from a more difficult to an easier medium. In other words, from an optically denser to an optically less dense medium. What is our focus question? How does the incident medium affect the extent of refraction? So in this investigation, we are going to change the incident medium that the light shines through. And we're going to see how that affects the extent of refraction. But what must be kept the same between our treatments to make this test fair? We need to control the medium that the light moves into, N2. We could call it the refracted medium. We must have a constant angle of incidence and a constant wavelength of light. Now these could be anything that we choose as long as we're consistent throughout. But what I'm going to choose in this particular investigation is that the light is always going to move into air. The angle of incidence is always going to be 30 degrees and I'm going to choose red light of 650 nanometers. We need a table into which we can put our data. Pause the movie while you complete this. Remember that in this investigation, like in the previous one, although our independent variable is incident medium, in the table we're going to put the indicator of this variable, what we're going to use to describe this variable. And our dependent variable is extent of refraction. But in the table we put the indicator that we're going to use to measure extent of refraction. And these indicators are refractive index of incident medium and angle of refraction. So Although our question is, how does incident medium affect extent of refraction? In our table, we don't put incident medium and extent of refraction because those two would be qualitative measures and we want quantitative ones. We put the indicators of each of those. In other words, refractive index of incident medium and angle of refraction. And then the heading has the variables themselves in. Table showing the relationship between incident medium and extent of refraction. And then we have the context for light moving into air. So N2 is going to be 1 with angle of incidence theta 1 equal to 30 degrees. We can choose any refractive indices that we like as long as we have a nice range. And I've chosen these. So now we're going to open the simulation and collect the data for these incident media. So we're using the bending light simulation. And for this investigation, we are controlling the medium into which the light goes and we are going to use air throughout and we are varying the medium from which the light comes. Angle of incidence is kept constant at 30 degrees. Light color is kept constant at red or more specifically the wavelength at 650 nanometers. Our first treatment has the incident and the refracted media both as air. So of course no refraction happens. The angle of incidence is 30 degrees and so is the angle of refraction. Now we vary the incident medium n1 to 1 comma 1. Note how the light is refracted away from the normal. The angle of refraction 33 comma 4 degrees. Now we change n1 to 1 comma 2. Notice how the angle of refraction increases. The light gets refracted further from the normal, closer to the boundary. 1 comma 2, angle of refraction 36 comma 9 degrees. Next treatment 1 comma 3, nearly the same as water, angle of refraction 40,5 degrees. N1, 1,5, which is glass. So material 1 should now be glass. Angle of refraction, 48,6 degrees. Last treatment, we pull the slider all the way to the right. Index of refraction of material 1, 1, 1,6. Angle of refraction, 53,1 degrees. So here we've entered the data into our table. In order to answer the question, how does incident medium affect extent of refraction? We now need to interpret what is the relationship between angle of refraction and extent of refraction. Angle of refraction is our indicator that tells us about the variable, the dependent variable, extent of refraction. But what does it tell us about extent of refraction? So to help us to think about that, let's add another column, extent of refraction. And what you need to do here is to write low and high at the extremes of this 
table. When are we getting the lowest extent of refraction? When are we getting the highest extent of refraction? And remember that in the case of light moving from an optically denser to an optically less dense medium like here, a great angle of refraction means that there's a lot of bending happening. So for example, here we have on the left light not being refracted at all, as can be seen by the angle of incidence and angle of refraction being the same as one another, both 30. And on the right, we have light moving from the denser, the optically denser medium, more difficult medium, into the easier medium. As a result, it's refracted away from the normal, bending the angle bigger than 30, 30 being the angle of incidence, by the way. And in this particular case, the angle of refraction is 53,2 degrees. And obviously, 53,2 degrees is greater than 30 degrees. And in this case, that also means that there's more refraction. So a greater angle in this case corresponds also to a greater extent of refraction. So I hope you saw that in the first reading, there's zero refraction. An angle of refraction 33,4 degrees for an angle of incidence 30 degrees is a low degree of or a low extent of refraction. And the highest extent of refraction that we have in this case is when we get an angle of 53,2 degrees. So we see that as the refractive index of the incident medium is increased, from 1 to 1,6, then the extent of refraction is also increased. More bending happens. So how do we answer the question? How does incident medium affect extent of refraction? What is our conclusion? We can give it in this format as something is increased, something either in or decreases, complete the statement. And hopefully what you said is, as the refractive index of the incident medium is increased, the extent of refraction increases. And we can word this in another way. As the optical density of the incident medium is increased, the extent of refraction increases. Remember, optical density can also be seen as how difficult that medium is for light. And the refractive index tells us how much slower light travels through that medium than through a vacuum. So the higher the number, the slower the light travels. In other words, the more difficult the medium. So when N1 is 1,6, that's a very difficult medium. That's a very optically dense medium. And for the more optically dense medium, we see there's a higher degree of refraction occurring.